Is Tony dead? We don't know. He was in the draft tonight in a neck brace. Does he need surgery? Is somebody going to replace him? Is he going to bring in a figurehead? Is Kenny Omega? How does he play to this? He's going to be there next week. That's right. Yes. There's, there's actually, we have to tune in to find out. That's true. That's one of the big things that has been missing from AEW lately is you got to tune in to find out what's next. Brian, Brian and Vinny, along with Granny and Craig and sometimes other people. Sometimes other people. Lisa joining us again. It's 10 past five in the morning. Oh, my God. You know, sometimes I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Or what are they doing with this? Or I don't know what the hell's going on here. But at the end of the day, you know, they got they got a bunch of great wrestlers. And when the day comes to put on a pay-per-view, like they never miss. We had Fozzy Sucks Chance. We had Please Retire Chance. We had Go Home Jericho, Go Home Chance. And everybody is like, it's Go Away Heat. We hate him. We want him to retire and never come back. If there comes a period where Jericho's on TV and they are consistently losing a large number of viewers, then it is, in fact, Go Away Heat. But right now, it is not Go Away Heat. Right now, it is Heat. It did feel like go away heat to me the the jericho I and mean, there was one i wrote down the go home jericho that was like oh god that, that feels uncomfortable to me but hey ho the danielson osprey match was one of the best matches ever in the history of this business lisa what did you think i mean come on it's one of the best matches of all time i mean you can't if you if you didn't absolutely love that match then you have no business watching wrestling there is a counter and a near fall in that match that i popped bigger for live than anything i've seen in years Oh, the bite, the b- Busaiku the, knee, the, the, off, the, the cutter. Os cutter. Was there ever a bigger Shawn Michaels fan than me? I had people online going, you know, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker at WrestleMania was better than this match. And it's like, brother, it wasn't though. It wasn't. I mean, Shawn Michaels probably watched this match and said, "I've never had a match in the universe of this match." He would tell you that. And they stare each other down. It's like Godzilla and Kong. They're fucking kaiju, tiny. Dangerous, terrifying kaiju. It was a Western. Yeah, that too. It was a duel. It was a shootout. They both raced at each other, and Will pulled that gun first. I don't think I've ever heard a We're Not Worthy chant at a wrestling show. That was amazing. This crowd was so awesome. I felt so bad for FTR and the Young Bucks. Imagine feeling bad for FTR versus the Young Bucks in a ladder match. In a ladder match. But then a fan and a mask hits the ring. And tips the ladder over and Dex falls down. And you'll never guess, but it's the scapegoat, Jack Perry. No hangman. Nope. No MJF. He beat him clean in the middle of the ring. No interference. He is your new champion. And it was great to see old Swerve get that belt. Sure was. What silly thing would you like to see as part of the Brian and Vinny live show in Vegas? Granny, what do you think we should do for this live show? I don't really care because I can't go. I am not ruling out a uh, well, alcohol you know, aspect. That I am not ruling Why out. Why does a, every uh, now and alco- then this go off mute? <laughs> that was it drives me nuts. A Brian drunken magic show. I will consider that one. <laughs> I could do some tricks at this live show. Write it down. Brian does tricks in Vegas. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes, Granny. I'm just clearing my throat. Okay. Oh, 1960 science quiz. 1960s science. Wow. Science. That's what I just said. Is that the Thomas Dolby over there? Yes. (laughs) Science. (laughs) I saw a video of you in one of those electric shopping carts. (laughs) The first thing I did was knock over. Yeah, I saw that. Two chairs. Then you ran over a guy. I was so close to him. Yeah. Well. <laughs> She's never been this happy in her life. She's so happy with murder. George Steele attempts to place a fast food order. Burger, fries, and Coke is all Burger, he says. Burger, fries, and Coke. And then George goes, food. And this went on forever. You know how many times I've been to Susie Scoops? There's like a line out the fucking door because it's hot. Finally, you're next. And the person in front of you steps up to the front. And, you know, the lady goes, can I take your order? And she goes, and he goes, hmm, let's take a look here. I haven't decided what I'd like yet. Let me look at the menu. 
It's like, you could see the fucking menu like 15 minutes ago. What the fuck were you doing in line the entire time? Hey, you know, does that thing have gluten in it or something? It's like, fuck, dude, order your fucking ice cream. There's like, dude, how hard is this? It's not like you have to get to the front of the line before you go, oh, is that the menu? That fucking thing that takes up the entire wall with words and pictures? That's a menu? Oh, my God. Hey, did you know this is the first show after a pay-per-view? Barely. A very newsworthy pay-per-view that had like one of the great matches at the very least in company history and also a new world champion. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't know it. Ten minutes into the program, for the first time, they mentioned there's a new world champion, and he comes out to wrestle a match. I asked the same question that everybody else asked, which is, why do we not have a promo? Why do we not have a celebration? And Tony was upset about that. He felt it was bad faith criticism that people would ask that question. Because Swerve is going to be having his first promo on Collision, opening the show after the NBA playoffs, where he figures they will have a giant audience. Okay. That's fine. We didn't know that. (laughs) This is not bad faith criticism. You know, we've been saying for a while, she's going heel. It's obvious to me, obvious to you. Well, it's not obvious to half these fans or more. Most of the fans chanting CEO and dancing and everything like that, it took the whole segment to finally get the fans to figure out, wait a second, we're not supposed to be cheering her. And ultimately, she did get booed at last at the end. They announced a casino gauntlet match for an international title shot at Double or Nothing. Under sudden death rules. Okay. There are 21 men in the back prepared to come out for this gauntlet. I'm like, so, so there's 21 guys in the back waiting to maybe come out. But if somebody gets a win somewhere, it's just all over. They just go home. Will Ospreay is going for the Tiger Driver 91, and he stops, and Excalibur goes... Yes, he is going to be retiring that move after injuring Brian Danielson. So now we're just presuming that everybody watched the post-show press conference. Like, if this was my job and I didn't watch the press conference, I'd have no fucking idea what you were talking about. Yep. It was it, like, just don't talk about it then. Let them tell the story later, which they did. And then you're not sitting there as a viewer feeling like you're not part of the club, which is one of the things you feel like a lot sometimes watching this show. You're not part of the club. You're not filled in on what's going on. They didn't tell you. It's a secret club. The alleged go-away heat of Chris Jericho. I told you guys that I would track it, and I did. And in fact, once again, his segment grew. I know this makes people irrationally angry because a lot of people are sick of Chris Jericho, but that's what happened. John Moxley versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Oh, this was sad. It was sad because somewhere fairly early in the match, Hobbs hurt his leg. It was the running high cross into the corner. Yeah. And he messed his knee up, and he fell outside, and it was just done. Tony is just Tony. He's out there. He's looking so nervous. Looks like he's about to vomit. The only thing I've ever wanted was what's best for AEW. Please shake my hand and reinstate me, and let's change the world together. They have a hug, but Jack has an evil smile for the hard cam, and then lays him out with a microphone to the gut. I don't know if you ever get kicked in the stomach or the balls, the nether region. Well, you're supposed to just, like, bend over. You got kicked in the stomach. Tony takes the fucking ragdoll back bump for getting hit in the stomach. And right then, I was like, oh, my God. We're off to the races, brother. And Matt Jackson grabs Tony, and he hoists him upside down. And they hit the rename Tony Khan Driver. Mm. But it really turned around when the last thing we see is Shad Khan hit the <gasps> ring. And this man is fucking pissed. I pray to all the wrestling gods, Terry Funk, that nobody smartened him up. Mm. Because, man, he got in the ring looking like he was going to fucking fuck somebody up. Yes, Tony Khan was wearing a neck yes. brace in the Jaguars uh, yep. draft room. You can see Shad is thinking, with love, I have a weird fucking kid. <laughs> well... Does he need surgery? Is somebody going to replace him? Is he going to bring in a figurehead? Is Kenny Omega? How does he play to this? He's going to be there next week. That's right. Yes. There's there's actually, we have to tune in to find out. 
That's true. That's one of the big things that has been missing from AEW lately is you got to tune in to find out what's next. Yes, I was hoping that Roxanne would lose the title and get drafted, but uh, she retained the title. Roxanne not going to the main roster yet. Appears not. We're going to wait till she's 40, and then we'll call her up. Just because I shake my ass, she says, doesn't mean I can't kick your ass. A good line in theory, but a better, better delivery would have been, just because I shake my ass doesn't mean I can't kick yours. Regardless. Thank you, Vinny. Yeah. For correcting her ass-related promo. They could have done a beach brawl on the fucking on the beach. beach yes. Body slam in the ocean. Sand in the fucking eyes. I hit you with a piece of driftwood. I choke you with a fucking... Seaweed. Seaweed. One of those big-ass long seaweeds with the big ball at the end. No. They had to hit each other with inflatables. Yeah. You know babies jump on inflatables. They do. <laughs> because they're safe. Yeah. I was so fucking angry. So when I first saw this, I thought, this is exactly what they did in Danielson and Osprey. Yes. They each go to another corner. Mm -hmm. They race at each other to try to hit their finish at the same time. One guy wins. Yeah. Well, these two actually did it first. Yes. Because at Vengeance Day, they did this same spot. But at Vengeance Day, Elia hit it first. Yeah. And so this was a replay of their own match. And holy fucking God, when these guys raced at each other and Trick hit that Trick knee, it was like a bomb went off. Oh, God. This fucking crowd absolutely went completely nuts. The place is going haywire. Camera is shaking. Oh. People jumping up and down. They're chanting, Adults, that trick. Grown people. It was so awesome. Yes. Trick's going to be the face of uh, NXT. And, so. and that'll be awesome. That was a great NXT. That was my favorite NXT episode of the year.